Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here and in this video we will be talking in detail about glycogen metabolism. So first going into the glycogen metabolism, we will talk few points about the chemistry aspects of glycogen. So what is glycogen? Glycogen is a type of complex carbohydrate belongs to homopolysaccharide class and that means homopolysaccharide in the sense its composition is purely by repeated units of glucose molecules. Right and the difference between glycogen and starch is starch is a plant based complex carbohydrate and glycogen is a animal based or animal origin complex carbohydrate right so glycogen will be the storage part of or storage form of carbohydrate in animals including humans so the significance of glycogen okay it is mainly acting as reserve form of storage of energy right when your blood glucose levels are exhausted that time glycogen is acting like a backup right so for that we have to be aware how this glycogen is synthesized in our body, where it is stored and how it will be uh, coming into the action in case of emergency such as like uh, starvation okay, and in need of glucose concentration to rest uh, restore into the normal levels in the circulation. Right. So glycogen metabolism, it includes two things. Metabolism, any metabolism you take, two things will be there, anabolism and catabolism. Here also as glycogen is synthesized and stored in the body, that is called anabolism. And in case of emergency, in case of starvation, in case of need of glucose, this stored glycogen will be broken down to form uh, free glucose molecules and sent to the circulation. So that is known as catabolism. So here anabolism aspect you can say glycogenesis and catabolism aspect you can say glycogenolysis. Glycogenesis and glycogenolysis are both the cytosolic process. So we are all aware in the cell what are all the subcellular organelles are there. So in that condition the metabolic pathways like glycolysis we have seen, TCA cycle we have seen, glycolysis will be taking place in uh, cytoplasm and Krebs cycle will be taking place in mitochondria. Similarly, this glycogen metabolism will be taking place in cytosol and the location where uh, it is taking place we have already discussed and what are all the organs it will be, the metabolism will be taking place, glycogen, right. So uh, this glycogen will be stored mainly in liver and in small amounts in muscles, skeletal muscles especially, right. So the glycogen metabolism mainly happening in case of liver and in skeletal muscles. So first we will discuss about glycogenesis, okay, the anabolic part of the this one, glycogenesis. Glycogenesis means when we have excess amounts of glucose molecules, okay. So when we don't require much of energy, so the produced excess glucose molecules, they will join together and form a storage form that is glycogen. So this glycogenesis will explain how these glucose molecules are joined together and form glycogen and stored in the liver. Glycogenesis is a pathway for formation of glycogen from glucose. This process requires what and all you require, the uttermost priority is glucose requirement, okay. And along with that ATP is also required, energy we have to spend for the synthesis of glycogen and uridine, triphosphate, UTP. So UTP is a nucleotide. Okay, UTP is a nucleotide which will be useful in synthesis of ribonucleic acid, right? It is one of purines pyrimidines, we are all aware, okay, nucleotides, okay, and that too nitrogen bases, so pyrimidine type of uh, base that is uridine, so when you have attached 3-phosphate to it, it will be converted to uridine triphosphate, that uridine triphosphate will be used in making of glycogenesis. So as we, we have uh, explained earlier like it occurs this glycogenesis is occurring mainly in muscle and in liver. So coming to the pathway, see the schematic representation, diagrammatic representation of this one. So first the starting substance, the main requirement of glycogen formation is glucose. So when we have got extra glucose molecules, in that conditions the glucose will be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. So here the phosphate group has been donated by ATP. So ATP is converted to ADP after donating its phosphate group by the enzyme glucokinase. The phosphorylation of glucose done by the enzyme glucokinase, right. And here magnesium, so small amounts of magnesium will be uh, needed as activator of glucokinase, right. And next this glucose 6-phosphate again converted to glucose 1-phosphate. That means the shifting of attached phosphate group from 6th carbon of glucose to 1st carbon of glucose, okay. This is called isomerization, isomerization of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose 1-phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. This enzyme also requires magnesium 
then here the main pathway of glycogen synthesis will take place that is conversion of glucose 1 phosphate to udp glucose here the molecule as we said in the beginning requirement of glycogen okay we require glucose we require utp and we require atp atp we have seen glucose we have seen now the role of utp here the utp what it do it removes two of the phosphate groups okay and it will be removing phosphates as inorganic pyrophosphates here gl from glucose one phosphate one phosphate is there okay already so what happens here and one phosphate from utp so two phosphate groups has to be removed one from your utp and one from glucose so both the phosphate groups removed as inorganic pyrophosphates okay so now once you remove the phosphate from glucose one phosphate it will be glucose now as you remove phosphate group from udp it will be udp right that udp and glucose forms udp glucose and here the enzyme is udp glucose pyrophosphorylase udp glucose pyrophosphorylase this is the enzyme okay which combines udp and glucose to form udp glucose okay and the attached phosphate groups in the utp and glucose one phosphate both will be removed as inorganic pyrophosphates now udp glucose will be transferred to one of the main point that is glycogen primer glycogen primer it is nothing but a uh, what to say it is a dimeric protein okay it's like proteoglycan you can say it is mainly proteoglycan it's a combination of carbohydrate and protein okay glycogen primer consists 4 to 5 units of glucose short range okay it is having maximum 4 to 5 units of glucose okay it's a short sequence of repeated units of glucose okay in association with the protein so it is known as glycogen primer or glyco genin okay remember glycogen primer or it is known as glyco genin so here the udp glucose whatever the glucose it is carrying it will donate it its uh, glucose to glycogen primer and liberated as free udp okay so here the role of utp is accepting the glucose and form udp glucose and donate its accepted glucose to some other uh, substance that is glycogenin okay to the protein glycogen and protein and liberated as free udp now here like this some 9 to 10 uh, glucose units that means 9 to 10 units of glucose units will be transferred to glycogen primer and this way what happened here there is a synthesis of some short sequence of glycogen okay along with the udp liberation so here the synthesis of 1 uh, for glycosylic units of glycogen primer okay by the enzyme glycogen synthase remember this enzyme this is very important because glycogen synthase is a rate limiting step of glycogen synthesis okay so and the speciality of this enzyme is this enzyme will be activated in dephosphorylated state that means there are some hormone regulation later we'll see the regulation of glycogen metabolism okay in that condition what are the things will phosphorylates or dephosphorylates based on that it will be the metabolism or the synthesis of glycogen will be activated or deactivated right so glycogen synthase is a rate limiting uh, enzyme of the glycogen synthesis and it is activated in dephosphorylated form once the some short sequences like 8 to 9 units of glucose units are attached okay short units of glucose units are attached to the glycogen primer so what happens there comes another enzyme branching enzyme so we are all aware what are all the branches present in glycogen glycogen is a combination of 1 for glycosidic linkage and 1 6 glycosidic linkage the thing is here glycogen synthase can able to introduce only 1 for glycosidic linkage it cannot introduce 1 6 glycosidic linkage but the significance of glycogen is it should have both 1 4 and 1 6 glycosidic linkage so that's why we need one more enzyme that is branching enzyme the speciality of branching enzyme is it removes some of the glucose units already present in the glycogen primer and makes branching that means branching in the sense alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage glycosidic linkage so this way it is repeated so this process is repeated glycogen synthase will come into the action repeatedly and then branching enzyme will come into the action repeatedly so that what happen with a straight line again there is a branching from there again there is a breaking of the glucose units again branching again removal of some of the glucose units again branching again removal of some of the glucose units again branching so like this it is a repeated process until a complex structure will form 
okay until it makes a complex structure right so here again this part when we want free glucose when we want free glucose from the glycogen there we have an enzyme debranching enzyme okay along with glycogen phosphorylase it's a bifunctional enzyme you can say what happened by introducing a phosphate group it breaks the branching so in case of branching there is a liberation of free glucose okay this free glucose has been liberated only because of one enzyme that is debranching enzyme okay that is known as glucon transferase it is a debranching enzyme right so this is all about glycogen synthesis thanks for watching thank you